Hello, my name is Jason Brosco. I work for Ultimate Air, the manufacturer of the Recuperator. I want to talk a little bit about the outside penetrations. So, um, on this side of the unit, both of these ducts are piped to the outside of your building envelope. One is bringing air in and one is taking air out. Okay, so we talked about this earlier. Um, you're going to have these attached here. Uh, somewhere very soon after this attachment, we're going to have an insulated piece of flex duct, two to three feet long minimum, to do vibration isolation and sound attenuation right here. Um, now, these duct lines that go from the unit to the outside must be insulated from the unit clear to the outside wall, uh, both of them, the intake and the exhaust. Um, both of them are susceptible to have condensation on them different times of the year, so they both must be insulated whether they're in condition space or not in condition space. Okay, so from the unit all the way to the outside, they get insulated, including if you have uh, something like a preheat device, you can insulate all the way over this thing. You know, you got to insulate it also because condensation will form on this outside surface and drip on your floor and you will not be happy about it. So these also get insulated. So the outside penetrations. So what are we going to do with that? <clears throat> I have a style of exterior hood that we do carry. This is actually a Sciho product. Um, we do carry our own uh, made aluminum hoods also. They're more of the boxy fashions. <laughs> the rectangular box looks like an overgrown um, dryer vent. But the important thing about these hoods is that they have a screen built into them. So this wire mesh screen so that no birds, mice, animals, uh, giant leaves, etc. get sucked into the unit. Uh, you know, primarily this is important on the intake. So you have that built into it. You want to make sure it's big enough per your duct design. We make these six, seven, eight, nine, ten inch, you know, all different diameters. Um, and then there's also this that can be put in line of the Airstream. This is a barometric back trap damper. Uh, for when the unit is off, and this goes up like this, when the unit is off, these are closed. When the unit is on, of course, these, uh, these get opened up and they get installed per the airflow direction. Okay, so these are barometric backdraft dampers. One means of having a door that seals the uh, outside penetrations from the unit. Now you can see if I still get a gust of wind on this side, it's still going to possibly blow these open. So the next best step of these is a um, like an automatic damper, being a power control spring return uh, on-off damper. You can wire those straight from the unit. We do have a relay that will <clears throat> close anytime that the unit is on so that you can open a powered damper. So if you want a positive seal uh, from on those two outside lines, I recommend uh, two of the uh, power open spring return closed dampers, uh, some sort like that. So now these, again, going through the outside, we have these. These are wall termination vents. These are for going through an exterior vertical wall. Um, there is nothing that says you can't go through the roof, uh, go into the eaves. Uh, all of those are very possible. We only carry the wall termination vents. Um, many other manufacturers make uh, vertical rain hoods for going through the roof. Um, when you're bringing in fresh air, you just want to make sure you're getting the fresh air from a uh, point outside that has fresh air not near your gas meter, not near where your dryer vent exhausts, not near where you warm your car up in the morning. You know, all of these places are not good spots for uh, fresh air being taken in. And if I put this up through the roof, I really don't want to suck air straight off of a hot shingled roof. So make sure you get a couple of feet away from that hot shingled roof, um, you know, for that type of application. 
Um, I mean, what's the best? I generally recommend the prevailing wind side of the house. It's always a fresh air source um, and not where you're going to blow your grass clippings into it, etc. And yes, this is a maintenance item. This has a screen on it. I guarantee you that after six or eight months of operation, there's going to be a mat of dirt on this, and then you will be getting very little fresh air. So these do need to be cleaned, uh, depending on your environment, once every three months, six months, eight months. You know, it is very dependent on the particulate you have outside.